Hey, this is Joe with Grow It, Build It, and today I'm going to tell you all about the spice bush. One of the more unique plants native to North America is the spice bush. It is rare to find a shrub that ticks so many boxes. It looks great all season long. It's highly adaptable in its growing conditions. It is a host plant for butterfly and moth caterpillars. Birds are attracted for its berries. And there are numerous culinary uses for people. Ever since I got into native plants, I've had an interest in the spice bush, and this video is going to serve as a complete profile on this shrub, including what is the spice bush and why you should grow it, the benefits, identification and characteristics, growing conditions, how to grow it from seed, save seed, wildlife and garden uses, culinary uses, and then we will review. And this video will be a little bit long, but there is a digital table of contents below, so if you just want to jump to a certain section, feel free. So I hope you stick around and learn about this one-of-a-kind North American shrub. So what is the spice bush? The spice bush is a deciduous shrub native to eastern North America. Scientifically, it's known as Lindera benzoin, and it typically grows 10 to 12 feet tall by 3 to 5 feet wide. Benefits Spring flowers so this is a native shrub that does produce yellow flowers, similar to the common popular exotic shrub known as forsythia. In fact, it's often compared to that. However, I'm not gonna embellish spice bush's beauty. Sometimes you'll hear people say that spice bush is the native plant alternative to forsythia. And it's very true that it produces yellow flowers like forsythia, but they're much smaller and not as plentiful as you can see here. It still looks nice, but the showiness is not comparable to forsythia. But the small yellow flowers on a spice bush contrasted against a forest do stand out and you know they, they're attractive they're, but they're not overly showy the flowers of the spice bush will be pollinated by various uh, small bees and flies fall color the spice bush leaves turn a brilliant yellow color in fall and this is one way you can find the plant you know if you're just driving past a forest if you see a lot of short yellow shrubs trees with brilliant yellow foliage it's a good chance that it's a uh, spice bush host plant. The spice bush is the host of the spice bush swallowtail butterfly and also the permethrin moth. Mature specimens will often have caterpillars and to find them you just look for the rolled up leaves. And often you'll find a little tiny baby or larger caterpillar hiding inside. Edible. The berries and the nuts inside of them are edible and have a quite an interesting flavor. True to its name, the flavor is spicy and peppery. These berries are anything but sweet, but they have their own unique flavor. Identification. Okay, when spice bush is grown in the open, it will form a globe-shaped crown. And it looks very nice as a landscaping shrub, it has a good shape to it. In full shade, it'll be more flat-topped and a little sprawling, as you can see here. It's trying to get as much sun as possible that happens to filter through the canopy. And they can be single to multi-trunked, and these trunks are small diameter as this is not a tall tree by any means. It's a small woody bush. But the bark is smooth, brown in color, but it will have small white spots on it known as lenticels. When it comes to leaves, spice bush have alternate leaves along the stalk that are four to five inches long by roughly half as wide, and they're generally ovate in shape. They have prominent veins, they're dark green color, uh, which will turn bright yellow in autumn, as I said. The edges are smooth, but if you crush or tear a leaf, it will make a delicious spicy aroma. You'll really like that. It's when I go hiking, I'm, I know it sounds kind of mean, but I'm constantly tearing leaves off and smelling them just because I like it. When it comes to flowers, spice bush have male and female plants. And by examining the flowers or noticing the presence of berries in late summer, it will tell you whether your shrub is a boy or a girl. Male flowers will have nine or more stems sticking out of from the tiny yellow flowers. Now these flowers are very tiny, 1 8 to 3 16 uh, diameter, so that's 3 to 4 millimeters. These are small. Female flowers will have a single style poking out and are around 2 millimeter diameter. And it's really hard to get good footage of this um, just because the flowers are so tiny, but this image helps show side-by-side -side comparison. And I can tell you that when you're actually out there looking at plants, you won't have any trouble differentiating the two. Successfully pollinated female flowers will produce green berries that turn red when they ripen up in late summer. These berries are favored by numerous birds and I enjoy the taste too. I've observed that during the severe drought though, the number of berries produced will be significantly reduced and have a much more potent flavor. And 
I mean, it's probably that they're aborting some of the seed, but that's just my speculation. I'm about to go into growing conditions, but I want to point out that all the information contained in this video also exists as an article at my website at growitbuilder.com. Just Google Spicebush, grow it, build it, and you'll find it in no time at all. If you guys are enjoying this video, please click the like button too, because that's a real simple way to help me out and I do greatly appreciate it. When it comes to growing conditions, Spicebush is very adaptable. It can grow in full sun or full shade, moist to medium moist soil, and it is drought tolerant in some situations though. And for soil texture, it can grow in anything from sandy loam to clay. Now, when I say spice bush is adaptable, it can grow in full sun as long as it has access to moisture periodically. It likes moist to medium moist soil in full sun. It can go in dry conditions provided it is in shade or has a, enough shade anyways. I found it on mountain slopes that were dry as a bone and it was doing okay. Now, in optimum growing conditions, which is full sun and moist to medium moist soil, the spice bush will grow fast, up to two feet per year. In full shade, this growth rate will be much reduced, but it can survive in all but the deepest of shade. And I mean, look where I'm filming right now. This is a tall canopy of old hardwood forest. They're surrounded by a thick canopy of oak, hickory, beech, and walnut trees. There is not that much sunlight that gets through, but there are dozens and dozens of mature berry producing spice bush plants here. And they're all around three to five feet tall. Okay, for saving seed, you can save spice bush seed in late summer by collecting some ripe red fruits before the birds get them, but you can't let the seeds completely dry out. So collect some berries and squeeze out the seed. Now you could just direct sow or winter sow these seeds right now, which I'll talk about in a minute, or we can start the stratification process. To be proper, you can sterilize the seed in a one to 10 bleach solution with water, then rinse it off thoroughly. For both cold stratifying and winter sowing, it helps to soak the seeds in water for 24 hours prior to doing so. Afterwards, place it in a moist paper towel and into a Ziploc bag in the fridge. Now, you don't need to do this right away after taking the berry, but you should still place the berries in a Ziploc bag in the fridge to maintain the seed's moisture level. I personally wouldn't plan on storing these seeds long term, but would suggest you plan on stratifying and planting or winter sowing that season. Growing spice bush from seed. The seeds of spice bush need to be cold stratified for about 120 days to get a good germination rate. And that's actually based on researchers who found that the highest germination rates were recorded when the seeds underwent a cold moist stratification period of 18 weeks. That is a very long time, similar to black walnuts or pawpaws. To achieve that cold stratification requirement, you can leave your seeds in the moist paper towel in a Ziploc bag and place it into the fridge for the 120 days until spring. Or you can winter sow the seed, which is where you will plant the seed in containers and have them outside during fall and parts of winter. However, during the coldest parts of winter, you should keep the containers in an unheated garage or shed as freezing will harm the seed. Also, when winter sowing, you need to periodically pick up your containers to check the weight and make sure they have some moisture as you don't want them drying out. But don't worry, you really won't have to water them regularly. But to plant spice bush seed, after stratification or for winter sowing, just fill a suitable container with moist potting soil. The container doesn't have to be too tall. At least three to four inches of soil depth will do. Plant your seeds one quarter to three eighths inch deep, which is six to 10 millimeters. Place your container outside where it will receive morning sun and afternoon shade. So what has been my experience growing spice bush? Well, the first year I sterilized my seed and rinsed it off, placed it in a moist paper towel baggie into the fridge. Later on, I winter sowed in a milk jug and I left it outside all winter. It was a normal to mild winter and I had 100% germination. Yep, 100%. The second year I repeated my process, but it was a very cold winter and my containers froze completely solid for a couple of weeks. I had 0% germination. This past year I got lazy. I collected my berries in September and placed them in a Ziploc bag in the fridge and left them there for several months after collecting. I then squeezed out the seeds and soaked them in water for 24 hours and winter sowed them on December 27th. I left the containers in my garage until March and I actually had an 87% germination rate with this aforementioned process. And germination started in late March, like March 22nd. 
Now, it probably would have been better to get my seeds sterilized and stratified in September rather than being lazy and just leaving them in the fridge um, for three months, but I got busy and forgot about them. The key point is that the seed has a long stratification requirement to break dormancy. Do not let the seed dry out and don't let it freeze solid either. Also, if you sow several seeds per container, it's really not a big deal to separate spice bush seedlings. They are quite easy and I've done so with the milk jug as well as containers. The root just doesn't go that deep right away. I separated my seedlings about six weeks after they first started to emerge. When it comes time to transplant, spice bush seedlings can be transplanted outdoors once they have two or three sets of true leaves. Young seedlings should be caged or planted in tree shelters to prevent deer and rabbit damage during the growing season and throughout the winter. More mature specimens can be transplanted while still relatively young. So like you could dig up one that's, you know, maybe two feet tall or less, but this should be done in very late winter or early spring while the ground is workable, cold, and moist. More mature specimens are reported to not transplant as easily and are often killed. For wildlife, the spring flowers are pollinated by tiny bees and pollinated flies. Mature spicebush plants will host the permethrin moth and the spicebush swallowtail caterpillars. And I mean, I have them on my single specimen off my back deck. The seeds are eaten by various birds such as thrushes, robins, kingbirds, quail, and the white-throated sparrow. For deer and rabbits, many references list that the spice bush is deer resistant. However, don't believe them. I have personally seen damage on my mature specimen in my yard at heights that were done by a deer. Now, it doesn't get browsed that often, but it has happened and it could be a risk, particularly for young seedlings. Rabbits will, may also chew on the tender bark in winter when lots of snow is on the ground. So for young specimens, I strongly suggest you cage or use tree shelters. You can purchase spice bush at some specialty nurseries, and I actually have a native plant nursery directory at our website. I'll link to it below, but it can also be purchased as bare roots from some companies or sometimes uh, state department of natural resources will actually have native plant sales where you can buy spice bush as well. If you wish to prune your spice bush, I recommend you do so in very late winter or very early spring before the insects are active. That allows the open wounds time to heal, uh, and make a scab so that you know they can't have a disease transferred in or something like that. Although I've really never seen much disease, if any, on a spice bush. I'm about to go into culinary uses, but I have to say this. Make sure you can identify this plant successfully before you start foraging the berries or the leaves or anything else. Do not eat any plant that you cannot identify concretely. Okay, for culinary uses. So spice bush berries can be eaten straight away right off the plant, um, including the nut inside. I used to be afraid of crunching on the nut. They're really not that hard. I, you know, I crunch them right up like peanuts. And as I forage for pawpaws or something else, I'm always filling a couple of Ziploc bags of spice bush berries for later eating. The flavor of the spice bush berry is really peppery, spicy, and fairly complex. There's nothing sweet about it though. There's like no sugar you'll detect. So do not bite into this expecting something sweet. You will be very disappointed. These berries taste peppery and spicy, but not sweet. It's an acquired taste. I've heard of people adding berries to ice cream and I tried it with vanilla ice cream and it wasn't for me, but you know, hey, if you got a bunch of them, why not try it? Probably the most interesting use of spice bush for me though, is to use it as a seasoning or a spice. So if you dry out the seeds and berries and then grind them up in like a coffee grinder and you can use it as a dry rub on grilled chicken or pork, pork chops. The flavor was somewhat similar to like a lemon pepper, but it is a bit unique. It did taste very good, but it didn't overly stand out to me as something that I want to do all the time. Like, like it didn't seem to be better than other regular seasonings and dry rubs, but, but hey, if you are back in the olden days with no grocery stores that you could just go buy seasoning at, then dried and crushed spice bush berries would be very valuable. Now you can use the leaves and new growth twigs to be uh, harvested to make tea. Just boil like a half cup of leaves for roughly 10 minutes. Um, I've done this and it tastes good. I mean, if you're into tea, I'm more of a coffee guy, but you know, I tried it. So with all these different ways to use spice bush from a culinary standpoint, I was wondering why nobody had investigated spice bush cocktails. 
and I knew that I enjoyed snacking on berries while hiking or foraging, and I wondered if it could give any special flavors to any kind of drinks. So I did a couple experiments. First, two years ago, I poured gin and vodka over some spice bush berries and figured I would let them soak in for an extended period of time. Well, I forgot about them, but I remembered them when I started making this video two years later. The berries turned the vodka and the gin both not quite black, but like a dark maroon color. And tasting these liquors by themselves in baby sips, it just tasted quite bitter. You know, I put a lot of berries in there and that's pretty much all I could say. It tasted bitter. But I wasn't finished yet, so I made a vodka tonic and a gin and tonic, just the liquor, ice, and the tonic water, and then I added several berries without seeds and stirred and smashed them in an attempt to release their flavor. Now, that didn't work well as I couldn't really taste the spice bush at all, so I decided to spike them with the bitter vodka and gin in their respective cocktails, and it just tasted a bit bitter. In the end, a gin tonic could benefit by being garnished with a few spice bush berries. Even though it probably wouldn't affect the flavor of the drink, it would add some to the appearance. Plus, you would be able to eat the berry while sipping, which could change the flavor profile. But, I don't know. That's pretty much my conclusion. I had never seen anyone try anything with spice bush berries and alcohol, so I figured I would take a shot at it and just report out what I found. Now, these are all the ways that I've tried using spice bush for a culinary perspective. But if any of you out there have any ways you've tried, please let me know in the comments. I'd be very curious to hear about it. When it comes to medicinal uses, spice bush was heavily used by Native Americans medicinally, and it was even listed in the early United States medicinal plant directories. They would use the tea to relieve symptoms of colds or respiratory issues, or really just as a panacea to treat almost anything. So when it comes to landscaping and garden uses, you can use spice bush just as any other small landscaping shrub or tree. You know, if you want berries though, you're gonna have to have both a male and female plant or at least have spice bush in your general area like within a mile of your home. But even if you don't have that, the spice bush will still host the uh, caterpillars. So you'll have that benefit. But I have this one shrub in my backyard and it was a six inch stick that I bought as a bare root back in like 2017 or 18. And after five years, it's about eight or nine feet tall. So it's probably about full size here, but it's, it's very shapely. It's got a nice round shape to it. I highly recommend this shrub. Okay, time to review. The spice bush is a native shrub that is highly adaptable, valuable to wildlife, edible, and easy to grow. It grows up to 12 feet tall in full sun. It'll be shorter and slower growth in uh, full shade. It blooms yellow flowers in the spring. Female plants produce red berries in the fall. Do not let the seeds dry out, freeze, and know that they need to have at least 120 days of cold moist stratification for a good germination rate. The plant will host the spice bush swallowtail butterflies as well as the permethrin moth, and birds will eat the berries and so do people. And also it has numerous culinary uses. So the real question here is why aren't you growing this shrub? I mean seriously, we have all these ornamentals that don't serve any purpose but aesthetics and don't feed any insects when we could be growing this one, which looks nice and serves a purpose to humans and wildlife alike. But, okay, I'll get off my soapbox. That's all the info I've got for you this week. I hope you found this plant interesting and perhaps may go try to forage for it sometime. It isn't too hard to find and you can locate colonies easily in the fall just driving around looking for yellow leaves. But all this info does exist as an article at my website that you can easily find via Google or links below. And if you have any questions, just ask them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. And finally, please click that like button because it is a real easy way to help me out and I do truly appreciate it. But alright, you all have a good one.